welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Competition Amendment Bill has been tabled before Parliament by Economic Development Minister Ibrahim Patel. Terence Creamer joins me to talk about some of the new inclusions in the bill. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the main objective behind these proposed changes? Well this uh, competition law has been in place now for 20 years, since 1998. And generally I think people feel it's been a successful intervention in the economy. We've obviously seen the, the big cartel cases, etc., that have come through, and we've seen the fines that have been levied against companies that have breached the law. And uh, I think since 2010, there's been something like 7 billion rands worth of fines paid. So I think the, what has happened now is there's been a review 20 years later of the law and its effectiveness. And I think the shift, the main shift, is to try and take, you know, we've, we've done quite well at dealing with bad behavior. And I think the issue is now to shift it towards market structure. And that's really what the attempt uh, is here, to, to create the tools and the instruments to allow the competition authorities to look at the, uh, not just the behavior of companies, but the structure. And the main instrument here will be uh, the market inquiry uh, mechanism. Now, we really have had some market inquiries into different sectors, uh, from healthcare to telecommunications. But uh, what the new version, once this bill is passed, will give uh, much more teeth to what the competition authorities can do through the market inquiry, as well as allow the, exec, uh, the, the minister to initiate a market inquiry. And it will make a move, it, move it from recommendations that the commission makes after inquiry to, to sort of uh, binding requirements uh, on that market within uh, a framework within caveats with an uh, ability to review and to take issues on review um, uh, as is the case with uh, other areas where we have binding uh, findings um, but I think really it's about giving the competition th authorities even more teeth. A lot of attention has been given to the national security provisions. Yeah, This is a, an inclusion that's getting a lot of headlines and a lot of uh, raising a lot of eyebrows um, we've never had a national security provision in our competition law. So what happens if a foreign acquirer wants to buy a company, uh, in a South African company in say a sensitive sector such as defense, for instance? We haven't really had an uh, instrument that allows the executive or parliament to intervene in any way to prevent that merger on sec national security grounds. This has now been included in the bill. And I think it's going to be a topic for big discussion as it wends its way through the parliamentary process. So this is a bill, the parliament has to assess it, and then it, once it's done its work, it will go back to the president for signing. So we're still a few months away from that. So, so really, this national security provision uh, enables the president to um, gazette a list of sensitive sectors or products. Um, and if uh, a transaction falls within that list, uh, that gazetted list, the president can then convene a committee of ministers to preside over the, or make a determination as to whether a transaction or a proposed merger might, uh, you know, have problems into from a national security perspective. Now, the minister believes this is very tightly codified, tightly framed, and therefore should have no real, uh, should be no real impediment to foreign investors taking a look at, at South Africa, and notes that many other jurisdictions around the world, from the US to, to Australia, and uh, every, just about everyone in between, the European Union, Canada, China, have these national security uh, provisions, so that uh, there's a determination made whether a, a, an acquisition can take place on national security grounds, and that ours is quite narrowly based. However, critics are really saying that it's not as narrow as the minister uh, makes it out to be. And in fact, the committee has broad powers uh, to stop a, a, a transaction from going ahead and too much discretion. So it's going to be, I think, an issue for debate. I think uh, having it in some form um, is probably likely. And maybe the tightening up of what this committee can do and create a transparency and maybe less discretion might be what will need to be brought in in the redrafting process. But uh, there's definitely, it's going to be a, a, a topic for discussion. 
There is also some leeway for larger firms to collaborate without the threat of breaching the law. Yes, I think the big focus until now of this amendment has been the tightening. So we see higher, stiffer penalties for breaking the law. We see this issue around national security as a tightening. There's also uh, sort of the framework um, and the language has been tightened generally. And then obviously giving this market inquiry more teeth. So the tightening aspect of the law has been getting a lot of attention. But this is an interesting loosening, I think, uh, of the competition law in some ways. Uh, the minister describes it as flexibility. And really it gives um, companies an opportunity to approach the competition authority and the minister to, to get some sort of exemption from uh, if, if they're wanting to collaborate, uh, say either in a vertical or even horizontally uh, between industries. You know, at the moment it's quite difficult uh, and p uh, companies are quite reticent to enter joint ventures and collaboration for fear of breaching the Competition Act. And here the minister and uh, the competition authorities can give uh, some uh, leeway uh, to, to for allow collaboration if it can be seen as it's in the national interest in the form of creating more jobs or helping facilitate growth uh, or I suppose in sectors where South Africa could play a larger ro a role internationally where the domestic where they need some sort of um, leeway or some sort of space to maneuver to become a major player internationally it seems that there's going to be some consideration for that we'll have to see how that plays out both within the parliamentary process uh, as well as later, once this uh, becomes legislation, uh, whether it will allow large companies to collaborate more uh, in, in the interest of growth and jobs. But it's, it's early days, but it does seem it's a bit of a, um, a compromise that government's making, saying, look, we are tightening up. Um, and the large companies and representations that have made uh, during this bill drafting process, which has been quite... Uh, intense. I think there's been quite a few sessions at Medlac around this business has said we need some space uh, to do joint ventures and to do it in a way that we don't have the threat that we are going to be seen in breach of the act all the time. So I think that that's, there has been an attempt here to reach some sort of compromise and balance. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.